Dear learners, welcome to NIOS Studio. I am Dr. Mary Vinita Thomas, Assistant Professor, School of Education, Central University of Kerala. Today, we will discuss the topic Objectives and Specification, Types of Evaluation and Internal Assessment. So, first, let us have a look at evaluation. Evaluation is the systematic collection and interpretation of evidence leading as a part of process to a judgment of value with a view to action. In the definition, if you see, there are four key elements, systematic collection of evidence, interpretation, judgment of value and view to action. So, evaluation comprises of all these four things. Now, having a look at the types of evaluation, placement, formative evaluation, diagnostic evaluation and summative evaluation. So the first one, placement evaluation. Placement evaluation determines pupil performance at the beginning of instruction. Now this type of evaluation aims at evaluating the pupil's entry behavior in a sequence of instruction. It determines the level or position of the child in the instructional sequence and it caters to the following questions. Does the child possess prerequisite knowledge and skills for the instruction? Whether they have already mastered some of the instructional objectives or not? And whether the methods of instruction is suitable to the child's interest work habits and personal characteristics. So, all these are catered to in the placement evaluation. Some examples for placement evaluation are aptitude test, attitude test, achievement test, self-reporting inventories, observational techniques, the medical and engineering entrance exams. Now, Moving on to formative evaluation. Formative evaluation is monitoring the learning progress during instruction. It is inbuilt in the teaching learning process. So this type, the main objective of this type of an evaluation is to provide continuous feedback to both the teacher and the student regarding the learning successes and failures during the teaching learning process. Feedback to students provide reinforcement to the learners and helps them identify the specific learning errors based on which they can make necessary modifications of their learning habits and work regime. Feedback to teacher provides information for modifying instructional strategies and plan further teaching activities accordingly. It helps teachers to give appropriate remediation to learners. Formative evaluation helps a teacher to determine the student progress at regular and frequent intervals of time. By evaluating the learning outcomes at the end of a unit or chapter or topic, the teacher can modify his methods, techniques and devices of teaching to provide better learning experiences. Formative evaluation can be done using unit test, the weekly or monthly test, midterm test, periodical test and teacher observations. Moving on to diagnostic evaluation. Diagnostic evaluation is for diagnosing the learning difficulties during the teaching learning process. Now, this type of evaluation helps in finding out the difficult areas, the weaknesses of the child and in finding solutions for the same through remedial teaching and other measures. When the teacher finds out through formative evaluation that the child is facing learning difficulties, he or she tries to resolve it using various alternative methods techniques and corrective measures. But even after that, if the child faces learning difficulties, then 
the teacher does a detailed diagnosis through specifically designed test called diagnostic test for diagnosing serious learning handicaps the services of psychological and medical specialists can also be utilized diagnostic evaluation can be done through achievement test performance test interviews observations and self rating next we have summative evaluation summative evaluation as the very term suggest it is evaluating achievement at the end of instruction summative evaluation is done at the end of a course or program so as to know the extent to which the learning outcomes and instructional objectives have been accomplished it certifies promotion of students to other classes or courses and also for career placements examples are the traditional school and university examinations the teacher made test the achievement test the standardized test and the practical test now let us have a look at the educational learning objectives the educational learning objectives can be classified under three domains namely the cognitive the affective and the psychomotor domain so moving on to the first one the cognitive domain which deals with our intellectual part here the six major classes of objectives are knowledge understanding applying analyzing synthesizing and evaluating the second one affective domain this deals with feelings and emotions so the five major classes of objectives under this are receiving responding valuing organization and characterization by a value then we have the third one which is the psychomotor domain which deals with the skill part the major classes of objectives under this domain are perception set guided response mechanism complex overt response adaptation and origination now apart from that yaga and mac or mac have given six domains of science so now let us have a look at these six domains given by yaga and mac comark they are concepts processes applications attitudes creativity and nature of science moving on to the characteristics of these six domains the first one science domain concept knowing and understanding domain for sci scientific information facts concepts laws hypotheses and theories accepted by the scientific community processes like exploring and discovering domain for sci processes of science like how scientists work and think in the process domain we have 13 science processes which have been advocated by the american association for the advancement of science they are observing predicting using space and time relationships identifying and controlling variables classifying grouping and organizing interpreting data using numbers and quantifying formulating hypothesis measuring defining operationally communicating experimenting and inferring the next domain applications using and applying the domain for sci here is applications of what is learned to do science connections to everyday life and informed decision making the next one attitudes that is feeling and valuing the domain for sci is attitudes sensitivity societal issues and impacts the next domain creativity imagining and creating the science domain for sci here is idea generation designing problem solving then finally we have 
the nature of science the scientific endeavor domain for sci is history and philosophy of science how science progresses and science knowledge and understanding develop so from the above mentioned domains we discussed we can summarize few major instructional objectives and specifications to be taken care of in science during the evaluation process the first one knowledge so under this the instructional objective is acquisition of knowledge of scientific terms concepts facts principles etc specifications are whether the child is able to recall and recognize then comes understanding the instructional objective is development of understanding of scientific terms facts concepts principles etc the specifications under here are defines describes compares identifies illustrates interprets summarizes gives examples and differentiates then we have application the instructional objective here is application of acquired knowledge to different situations specifications are whether the child is able to analyze predict interpret relate and demonstrate the next domain creativity the instructional objective here is development of creativity the specifications are organizes designs constructs originates creates composes relates and modify the child should be able to do all that then we have skill the instructional objective is acquiring practical skill specifications are the child should be able to draw charts tables graphs solve problems prepare models and translate data then comes the domain of interest the instructional objective is development of interest in science and its related aspects the specifications are studies literature on science the child participates in exhibitions scientific debates and discussions enjoys field visits to scientific areas and writes articles and papers on science topics then the next one attitude the instructional objective developing scientific attitude that is a positive attitude towards science related matters the specifications reads scientific literature reports matters in systematic manner shares scientific information justifies things based on verified facts takes initiatives in science related matters describes and differentiates finally the last domain the nature of science the instructional objective development of understanding of how scientific knowledge has changed and progressed the role and contribution of scientist involvement of social factors in scientific development science as an endeavor and the ability to contribute for the welfare of humanity so here we have the following specifications relates describes discriminates compares justifies infers analyzes predicts initiates proposes devises performs and solves now if we look into the above discussed objectives and specifications we can see that there is a lot more to teaching of science rather than just teaching of theory and concepts to students of course the learning of basic theory and principles can be checked through our traditional assessment methods but what about the other aspects we discussed now how can we evaluate all these so for this our term and exams or unit tests are definitely not going to help we need something different for assessing all these and that is how the concept of continuous and comprehensive evaluation came into being so we will see what is continuous and comprehensive evaluation 
Continuous and comprehensive evaluation refers to a system of school based evaluation of students that covers all aspects of students' development. In the scheme, the term continuous implies that evaluation is a continuous process rather than an event which is built into the total teaching learning process and spread over the entire span of academic session. So the term continuous here includes continuous regular assessment, frequent conduct, diagnosis, remediation, retesting and feedback for self-evaluation. So the assessments should be conducted regularly. Then how frequently we are conducting it? Are we diagnosing the learning difficulties of the child? And after diagnosing it, are we giving some remedial measures? And after that, after remediation, are we retesting the child? And finally, are we giving feedback for self-evaluation? So all these aspects have to be taken care of in CCE. One thing to be remembered, however, is that continuous assessment does not mean frequently assessing the child on structured formal tests like we do in our classrooms. In fact, these marks are not to be entered in their report cards also. This just means conducting formative assessment using a variety of tools and techniques for finding out their learning difficulties and weaknesses in the respective areas. And after that, appropriate measures have to be taken to overcome it and help them progress in their learning. The other term that is comprehensive, this implies assessing both the scholastic and co-scholastic aspects of students' growth and development. Since abilities, attitudes and aptitudes can manifest themselves in forms other than the written word, the term refers to application of a variety of tools and techniques. Scholastic here includes assessing the learners in terms of knowledge, understanding or comprehension, applying, analyzing, evaluating and creating. Co-scholastic includes assessing the child in life skills, social skills, emotional skills, thinking skills, attitude, interest, values, co-curricular activities and physical health. Let us have a look at the functions of CCE. CCE provides information on the growth and progress of a child in both scholastic and co-scholastic areas. It gives diagnosis and remediation, that is, it provides immediate feedback to teachers and accordingly, teachers can plan further activities. It helps teachers to design effective teaching strategies as per individual differences of children. It is a self-assessment for students. The students can know their own strength and weaknesses in both scholastic and co-scholastic areas. And CCE helps in making decisions for future, that is, choice of career and courses for higher studies. Now, CCE is done two methods, that is, the internal assessment and external assessment. External assessment, as we all know, it is organized and conducted through standardized test, observation and other techniques. The external body or examination committee is in charge. This indicates the progress and achievement of the learners, usually in grade-related or numerical terms. It is the more formal summing up of a pupil's progress. Now coming on to internal assessment. Internal assessment is an inbuilt part of the teaching learning process which helps monitor the child's progress continuously. It helps identify the learning difficulties of the learners. It gives information on current levels of student performance. Based on that, teachers can modify their instructional strategies so as to cater to the different needs and learning styles of students. Internal assessments also help students in self-assessment by providing them with critical feedback. It assesses the child on both scholastic and co-scholastic aspect. It is embedded in the curriculum 
and is mostly informal in nature. It is conducted by the teacher in charge. Now, moving on to the examples of internal assessments. Checklist, rating scale, student journals, reading test, project, quizzes, portfolios, rubrics, peer reviews, seminars, assignments are all examples of internal assessment. We are all familiar with reading test, project, quiz, seminar, assignment and peer review. We will have a look at checklist, rating scale, student journal, portfolio and rubrics. The first one, the checklist and the rating scales. Now checklist have a yes or no format in relation to student demonstration of specific criteria. That is, either it will be a yes or a no. If the criteria is present or the child has done it, the teacher will put a tick in the yes mark, otherwise a no. Then the rating scale. Rating scale is one step ahead of checklist. It allows teachers to indicate the degree or frequency of the behaviors, skills and strategies displayed by the learner. So here is an example of a checklist. On the left side you can see a yes or no column and on the right hand side the different criteria like the space for manipulation of data, match to plan, organizing sequentially, labeled fully, variables identified. So if the child has done all these, the teacher will give a tick in the yes column, otherwise no. Now this is an example of a rating scale. Here if you can see on the left hand side the criteria, preparation of report, presentation of material, displaying the visual aids, making eye contact, all these are there. But on the right hand side, instead of a yes and a no, we have four bifurcations that is excellent, good, fair, weak. So it is one step ahead, it gives you the degree, we can know the degree to which the child has performed. Then comes rubrics. A rubric is a coherent set of criteria for students work that includes descriptions of levels of performance quality on the criteria. Instead of judging the performance, the rubric describes the performance. The resulting judgment of quality based on a rubric therefore also contains within it a description of performance that can be used for feedback and teaching. Now this is an example of a rubric. A child has written a mind map and a teacher is assessing him using a rubric. So on the left hand side you can see the criteria, the neatness and presentation, use of symbols, images, color. And on the right hand side you can see emojis and scores 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So the emojis also vary according to the scores. As the score decreases you can see there is a change in the expression of the emojis. Now for a score of 5, the smiling emoji you can see, neatness and presentation. A description is given, if a child gets 5 that means the mind map was well presented and all the information is easy to understand. If a child gets 4, you can see that the mind map was well presented and most of the information is easy to understand. For 3, the mind map was mostly well presented but some of the information was difficult to understand. And for score 2, the mind map was not neat enough to understand most concepts. And for a score of 1, we have the mind map was not neat enough to understand. Similarly, we have use of image or symbols. Again, a score of 5. Most categories are enhanced with simple symbols. If a score of 4, some categories are enhanced. A score of 3, few categories are enhanced. And if he is getting 2, that means the mind map includes some images. And a score of 1, the mind map includes few images. Similarly, for usage of color, if he is getting 5, it means he has included color to show all connections and he has organized the topics very well. But if it is 4, he has in inducted or he has included color to demonstrate only some connections. So similarly, for score 3, 2, it will go on and finally 1, it indicates that the child has failed to include color in the mind map. So this is more clearer to the child. The child can understand where he is lacking, why he has got a less mark. The next one is portfolios. A portfolio may contain one or more pieces of a student's work, some of which demonstrate different stages of completion. 
The portfolio contains samples of the learner's work and shows growth over time. For example, a student's writing portfolio may contain his assignments, test, articles, pieces of fiction, poetry and an outline, rough draft and final draft of a research paper. So it is a compilation of academic and co-scholastic aspects also. The science notebooks or the journal entries, it provides a platform for students to write down all that they learn, think and understand during the science class. It can either be structured or unstructured. The notebooks may include stories and poems, record sheets, charts, tables and graphs. Drawings also reveal what students have learned. The teacher should assess the level of detail, use of labels and quality of explanations accompanying these drawings. Then it will prove to be very helpful. Thus we can see that effective assessment in science calls for a combination of both internal and external assessment. Internal assessment in fact prepares the learner for external assessment. The science teacher should first list out the instructional objectives that need to be developed in learners during science teaching. We have already discussed that here and based on those objectives, the teacher can plan evaluation. The evaluation should give the teacher a clear picture on the extent to which the instructional objectives have been achieved. And this can be verified by using the specifications mentioned along with each instructional objective. So we can see that evaluation in science is not at all an easy task. The teachers have to be very careful while evaluating the child. The instructional objectives, the specifications, everything have to be taken care of and accordingly assessment and evaluation should be carried out. Another one point is in classrooms, especially science classrooms, we cannot assess the child only using external assessment. There should be internal assessment and that is why we discussed the concept of continuous and comprehensive evaluation. There should be a mixture of tools and techniques that we discussed above. All these should be implemented while assessing the child in the science classroom. So this was about evaluation in science. We discussed the concept of evaluation, the different types of evaluation, the significance of evaluation, why you need it in a classroom, in a science classroom, why it is important for the teacher and the student and why it is essential for all of us and finally how evaluation can be carried out effectively in the science classrooms. We also discussed few major instructional objectives and specifications to be taken care of in science during the evaluation process. So hope you all have understood it. Thank you everyone.